Hi everyone, I hope you are all well. We've just had an Easter weekend and um, yeah, I ate chocolate. Anyway, uh, next up, I've got the most gorgeous lead crystal paperweight. Now this is not optical crystal, uh, but of course you can use optical crystal and that's probably easier to find. Um, this is a uh, full lead crystal. Um, very old, Dartington I believe, many years ago uh, and I bought a pile of stock from an old engraver. So I am very lucky. Anyway, um, it's just a canvas for me to do this next project on and you can do it on whatever you like. But what I'm going to be doing is, is engraving on the underside. So if you were to follow along with this sort of thing, you could just get an ordinary pane of glass, uh, preferably a thicker one than normal. Um, and say if you were going to, to um, work on a normal piece of, of sheet glass, go for something like a six mil. Um, not a three mil that is very very thin and hard and if you worked on a little bit thicker it would be a bit easier otherwise um, a sort of an upright plaque or something like that or uh, even a um, actually I had some around here somewhere um, a drink a drinks mat you can come by them quite cheaply as well right okay um, there's our subject for the day <laughs> this was by special request um, from one of my live chats on Patreon and it's to do obviously a sunflower. Now there's quite a lot of detail in a sunflower and as you can see I have added a little bee but I think my little bee is probably going to be on the upper surface. I will engrave the sunflower underneath and then I will engrave the bee on the upper surface. That is my plan. I might change it but I think that would be better. I used to do a lot of um, paperweights with uh, like carp, koi carp on the underside and then dragonflies and that on top and that worked very well. I did a whole series of those so I don't see why not um, with this sort of thing. Um, I have done an enormous colour of crystal with this uh, theme of, of um, sunflowers and bees and that, that did work well. I worked on all surfaces. So right, um, quite a lot as I say you can see the undulations here that is prominent then it dips backwards then there's a prominent bit in the front um, and then of course lots and lots of lovely little petals. There is quite an intricate design in the middle. Um, it's quite geometrical and then there's all these little bits on the outside. Now if you were to paint, um, say for example watercolour painting and you're building, uh, you're, you're engraving, oh, you're painting Say for example you are painting a building in watercolours, a brick building. There's no ways you sit and, and paint every single brick. Well I certainly wouldn't. Um, but you give the impression and so when it comes to, to subjects like this we've got to give some sort of impression of the design in the middle of the flower. Yeah, it's going to be a recognisable sunflower and, and rather fun I think. I took this off uh, Wikipedia and I have moved the leaves up a little bit but in actual fact I have done it to the size that we're not even going to be able to have room for the leaves. I just wanted an enormous sunflower and why not? <laughs> Um, yeah, there's not a lot more to, to tell you about it. I think it will be a super duper exercise. 
and um, I keep thinking it's simple but then is it going to be simple hmm I'm not really sure still not sure how I'm tackling it anyway okay have fun let's get on with it so here it is it has an interesting side to it and as you can see I'm pointing out there's a slightly flatter bottom and a slightly more rounded top and um, so I'm going to be engraving on the bottom uh, interesting on the side is a little bit um, blobby I don't know why it's just the way it's made now I've pointed out here a little bubble that is a sign of course that this is most definitely not optical crystal it's not something that's just made in China this is something very special it is full lead crystal and there you saw uh, my image that I was going to be putting well I am going to be putting behind the glass I have uh, also printed a little circle so that it just helps me center it but you don't need that just stick it in the middle um, the whole idea is there you just get a visual I've put a little bit of tape of course to hold it in place both um, at the top and slightly on the side and that just is enough to hold it in place now you may be wondering wow you know it's quite thick what do you plan to do and of course I am um, tracing through now what I've done here very simply is trace the outlines of the petals and now I have a jolly great big diamond and I have started by engraving deeply in the middle where that little bit was sticking out and um, and I am fading it upwards so sort of flicking it out and this is hopefully giving it a sort of a cone shape from the other side now as I say as I mentioned uh, just quickly um, I very very simply outlined roughly all the petals going around the edge that's all um, there was no need really to to film it I just did it at rapid speed <laughs> not even every petal as it is in the picture um, just roughly there is a um, an interesting little tip for you if you are tracing through very thick glass like this just close one eye because that reduces the 3d down to 2d and it just makes the tracing a little bit easier so here I'm using the same jolly great big fat diamond um, which is very rough and it's just eating into this crystal like butter um, and so now I'm creating the other area going around uh, the middle this is also very deep it protrudes so it's a sort of an undulation that you are creating there's a, a, a bit sticking out the middle then it dips inwards and then the sort of donut effect around the edge of course we are a long 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 way from adding all the little little bits of the flower that are in there the seeds and and, and all the little um, I suppose they're little stamens and things um, I don't know I'm not a botanist I don't and school was far too long ago for me to remember it all so I'm creating the shapes and I am also just roughly flying over very lightly the areas that were not engraved and sort of just blending it all together really um, this is not absolutely perfect donut shape um, with the lump in the middle but it is it's it's there it's enough for what I need drying it off as you can see I took the, the image away so now we can see what is going on eventually there it is now you can see with the light showing to the side um, how the undulations are looking it's rather good yeah I'm quite happy with that 
rather fun, isn't it? And of course, this crystal is so beautiful that it shows through really well. Now here I've got a brown stone. Uh, what I'm going to start doing is smoothing it out a bit. I'm also showing you a pink stone and a white stone. This is not a white Arkansas or the uh, Jura white. Uh, this is a, a rougher stone and here is a green stone as well. So really any, any stone um, that you may have can start smoothing out the rough diamond but then I decided uh, well, I gave it a go with this brown, um, but it didn't last very long. I got fed up. It's the wrong shape, of course. Um, and I don't have a lot of patience when I'm doing this. <laughs> but also, we're not creating a baby's bottom either. We are creating a sort of a, a darker effect. And here I've I've grabbed a rounder shaped pink stone and you can see already that it's creating um, a sort of a smoother effect to the diamond so it's slightly darker already and um, as I say I'm just doing it very roughly because in the end with the all effect all the effects that I'm going to be creating there's a lot of light and dark and light and dark so I don't have to, to make this perfectly smooth or, or perfectly dark because um, I'm going to be doing so much to it. Right, here I have got um, some Jura White stones. This one that's in the drill at the moment, I thought it might, I might be able to get away with it. But the top is so worn down. It is a very, very old one. And I was trying to sort of use the side of it, but no. But you can use um, whatever shape you've got and a little bit more patience than, than I have. Um, I was just trying to sh change the shape of it a little bit. Because, of course, this is your ultimate, ultimate pre-polisher. It will make it much, much darker. Um, you, you, we're basically slowly smoothing smoothing it out or creating darker, smoother areas. It may look a bit textured, but it's not textured as such. It is just a variation of shade at this stage. Now I got really impatient and I got out one of my very, very old, very, very rare, impossible to find, large Dura White. The stone really does an amazing job in smoothing out the diamond. Look, as you can see, there's no texture as such, and our shape is still there. So here I've got my huge, big, fat rubber. You can use whatever rubbers you've got on the go. This is so, so fat that it wouldn't even go into the dent. <laughs> I mean, I could shape it a little bit, but I've got other rubbers that I can use. So this is one that I am trying out from uh, Eternal Tools. I'm not impressed with it. I'd, I don't know what it is used for otherwise, but it certainly does do some polishing, but it also leaves a ghastly green residue everywhere and it also wears out pretty fast. But as you can see, it is doing a fairly good job of, of polishing. So now you can see that it is quite dark. Oh, I've got another rubber now. 
This is just a black one. Getting down into the nitty gritty. So this is creating a sort of a background canvas. It's like preparing a canvas for the middle of the sunflower in here. <laughs> yeah, I'd, the, the drill had spat a whole lot of glass dust onto my lens and so I just took a little lens brush. So we've still got the basic shape going on, the undulations, and that's that prepared. Now, I'm afraid my image got very wet and I didn't print another one. Um, but I'm, I'm basically showing you where um, you've got the, the, a sort of a, a bit sticking out in the middle. You can't really see it there. Um, and the, the deeper part is just before the petals. But in between, you have this interesting shape uh, layout, um, sort of a geometrical spiraling layout um, which of course I'm not going to do to scale because those little dots were absolutely minute so I am doing an impression of it and I saw the little seeds in that kind of swirly shape so now all I'm doing is roughly drawing in a sort of a grid to work with. So if you draw the lines in sort of a spirally shape from the middle going outwards one way, and then try and reverse your brain to do the same going the other way. <laughs> it reminds me of a spirograph. I still have my spirograph that I had when I was from about seven, seven or eight years old. I still have it and I think I've only got one piece missing. I loved the spirograph. It um, would produce these amazing, amazing geometrical patterns. So I don't know where I've gone. What am I doing? Okay, I needed to show you it more clearly. So just popped a bit of white paper behind. So as I say, there's no way this is to scale. This is much, much bigger. But, you know, it's just to give the impression uh, of what, um, what they really look like. I just, I'm just throwing in some middle bits. It doesn't matter. The middle gets very... Uh, dotty and messy anyway but it just helps with the visual so I have got a very very small diamond burr and this just goes to show how soft this crystal is because I know this diamond burr is very worn out But as you can see, all I'm doing is drawing these funny little shapes. I mean, I, I could have actually just put dots in them. Um, but it doesn't matter. I'm just drawing these, these shapes. It's called Artistic License. <laughs>
course, this is a permanent marker, so it's a little bit of a pain to get off. I could have just used some uh, white spirit or even some... Um, I don't really know, actually. Well, I mean, water could have, um, at a push, got uh, got it off. But, of course, it's it will have gone into the engraving a little bit. Um, and so... I will tackle if there, when I'm finished. If there's anything still lurking, then I will get it out, even if I have to engrave it out. Um, it's not so easy to get off when you when you put um, a permanent marker into an engraved area. Right, so I've just got a a small diamond, which I am, as you can see, just dotting in these areas just to fill them up. Now, I am not pressing hard. Um, I'm going to have another look at the picture. I think these are uh, the, the little seeds have got, they sort of go in a direction. Um, I'll have a closer look at them and for the next video. And if they need to be um, slightly deeper and given a little bit more character then I will be doing that but as you can see there's the start of the effect of the very very center of the sunflower now what I'm doing here is I'm having a look and showing you the edges um, just before the petals it is a very strange texture these these little little dots um, I couldn't quite see it in this picture and uh, I I don't know that I've ever looked at a sunflower that close I mean I must have had them in the garden in Africa anyway so here's a photograph and as you can see those little middle middle bits do have a slight pointy texture so we'll tackle that next time and here along the edges we have got a short stroke effect. Near the middle, we've got more dots, and then there are these strokes, quite deep. Those are gonna be really fun to do. I'm looking forward to doing this. And you can see those little dots in the shapes. And then, yeah, so it's quite textured on the outer bit. It's amazing, absolutely amazing. So those are they're almost like little squiggles, really. They do become very squiggly near the end and dotty near the middle. So, right, yes, I think I've shown you enough now. <laughs> anyway, well, I hope you enjoyed that. And um, you can get started with a sunflower if you like and catch up with the next video coming soon. Thanks for watching guys, bye for now.